Well, earthquakes happen often enough here in California. In fact, many of you felt the one on Tuesday. And when talking about these earthquakes, you might hear about how deep they are, but what exactly does that mean? First Alert meteorologist Darren Pett explains in today's Weather Extra segment. Considering how often they happen and how important they are to life here in the Bay Area, we probably don't talk about earthquakes enough, especially when we get into breaking news situations and we're throwing all kinds of numbers around. Magnitude, you probably are well aware of, but depth is one that gets used a lot. How deep was the earthquake? Oftentimes that gets thrown around in the newscast, especially during breaking news. And it's not a number that many of us have a whole lot of experience being able to put context on. So I want to talk about earthquake depth. And to do that, we've got to bring down the depth of the earth here. You can see all the geologic layers. We've got to go pretty deep because these things happen fairly deep. On Tuesday, April 4th, we had a 4.4 earthquake that happened just south of Hollister. And everybody's on board with that information. I think we can all kind of wrap our heads around that. But during that breaking news, we also told you it was five miles deep, and that's fairly shallow. And it's important to really kind of put some context on that, because five miles, if you think about this, we're telling you the earthquake, the actual rupture in the earth happened five miles down, which sounds incredibly deep on the one hand. But from an earthquake standpoint, it's actually very shallow, as we'll see here in one second. And first of all, we'll discuss why that's important. The depth of the earthquake matters so much because the closer to the surface it is, and you know, there's your house right up there, if it's only, in relative terms, five miles deep, the energy from that earthquake, which is ruptured five miles under your house, doesn't have to travel all that far. It's only got to go five miles. And you're going to feel it. It's like it's a lot closer. Now, it turns out five miles, while that is shallow, is actually right on the mark for average for what most earthquakes are here in the Bay Area. Our range is like four to six. So now at least we have that context when an earthquake happens. If it's within that range from four to six, we know, oh, okay, that's typically the way our earthquakes happen. And I'll explain why that is in a second. It has to do with the kind of faults we have. But it's certainly not the deepest they can get. And the biggest earthquake in recent history was Loma Prieta in 1989. That was the 6.9 earthquake. That one was more than twice as deep as the earthquake that happened on Tuesday, April 4th. And it also happens to be just about on the deepest end of possibility here in the Bay Area. You're not really going to get an earthquake here on our faults that goes much deeper than about 12 miles. So in that sense, while 11 miles is still what seismologists would consider a shallow earthquake on a global perspective of earthquakes in general, for those of us here in the Bay, 11 miles for Loma Prieta could be thought of as one of the deeper earthquakes for us. Now, if you want to gain some perspective on this, because earthquakes are a global phenomenon, there are many other types of faults than the ones we have here, and those are the ones that produce earthquakes that are much deeper. And up until recently, seismologists thought they had a pretty good handle on just about how deep earthquakes can get at their lowest. And the number for a long time was about 186 miles deep. Now, they've done some research in the last few years, actually, very recently, which seems to prove they can happen even deeper than that. But let's use the 186 miles deep for now, just as the reference for us to keep ours in perspective. Ours are shallow. Ours are shallow in relation to what the potential is for earthquakes. And that's because of the kinds of faults we have here at home. So in order to kind of look at that, we're gonna move our scale for depth out of the way. And I just wanna show you the two primary kinds of earthquake faults. First, the one we don't have. This is the thrust fault. This is where two plates ram together head on. Ours does not do that. But many earthquake faults around the world do. And if we come in for a close-up look at this, let's take this little section of the Earth here. There are forces that are pushing it that way, and it's going into this plate. Something's got to give. And what happens in a thrust fault is one plate dives down under the other. This plate, this boundary, this half, actually gets jolted upward as this one goes down. You can call that subduction. But what, probably the best example of this is that is the Himalaya. In other words, this is India, this is Asia. Right there where you have that edge, that's how the Himalaya have formed. You've got a thrust fault where India is getting pushed into Asia, diving underneath it and crumpling up on the leading edge, the biggest mountain range in the world. And if you do earthquakes like that often enough over millions of years, you can get the tallest mountain range in the world. Now, those earthquakes that happen in the Himalaya, they're on average about 40 miles deep. A lot of energy there, and 
you're building mountain ranges and 40 miles deep is the average there, much deeper than the earthquakes we have here at home. For ours, we've got to look up here at the higher levels of the strata. And when we do that, we see our kind of earthquake fault, and no doubt you're familiar with this one. We have a transverse fault. Maybe you've heard of it as a strike-slip fault. It's telling you the same thing. In fact, that's what the San Andreas Fault is. You can see that deep red line there. That is the boundary between the Pacific Ocean, or at least the Pacific Plate over here in geologic terms, and the North American Plate over here. The San Andreas is the big one. It's actually the boundary. None of the other faults are. They're all strike-slip faults. They're all picking up the energy of what's happening here. But the San Andreas Fault is where you actually have this happening. You've got the Pacific Plate over here on this side. You've got the North American Plate over that side. And they are sliding past one another. So the Pacific Plate's going up that way. And the North American Plate's going that way. Those kinds of earthquakes, by their very nature, are shallow. So our earthquakes here at home are going to be shallow. And they're going to fall within that range on average, between about four to six and about as deep as 11. And the closer they are to the surface, obviously, the more you'll feel them. By the way, there's one other item on here. We also call this a right lateral, which I'll just take you slightly deeper into the weeds on this. We call this a right lateral because as you stand here, right? Let's say I'm standing on the Pacific plate. If you look at the plate on the opposite side of where you're standing, it appears to have moved to your right. Same thing, if I come over here, and I'm standing in North America now, and I look out over at the Pacific Plate, the Pacific Plate now appears to have moved to my right. Whatever the other plate appears to have done, that's the name that geologists have given it. So ours is uh, a transverse fault, a strike slip fault, and it's a right lateral. And the most important part for this discussion is it's usually going to happen about four to six miles deep and about 12 miles at its deepest, and that does impact how strongly we feel it at the surface.